I greet you once again with joy that comes from knowing our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of today. And thank each of you who have participated in assisting me and leading worship this day. I give God thanks for you. Our sermon message comes to us this morning from the Old Testament, from 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. For your hearing, I'd just like to lift up two verses of this text. I call your attention to verse 13 and 14 from the New International Version of the Bible. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Naaman's servant went to him and said, Father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not do it? How much more than when he tells you, wash and be cleaned? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Beloved, Naaman's servant went to him and said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not do it? How much more then when he tells you wash and be clean. So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. The word of God for the people of God, praise be to God. Wash and be clean. Let us look to the Lord. O thou in whose presence my soul does take delight, in times of affliction I call, my comfort by day and my joy in the night, my hope, my salvation, my all. O merciful God, I humbly come before you at this time. O kind God, asking that you not hold my sins against me at this hour, but Father God, asking that you would take me deep down in your treasures and that you would leave me there. O kind God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Lord. You are my rock and my redeemer, and the people of God do say, Amen, 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 and amen. Thank you, Lord. Wash and be clean. In our text, we discover that Naaman, a well-respected man in his community, a man of authority in, 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 his, in his profession, one whom the political leader of the time depended on and trusted, at first glance, it appears he has everything everything a man could hope for. He has a wife, a friend group, a servant. But as we look closely with our physical eyes and our spiritual eyes, we can see that he too is lacking, just like you and I. Naaman, Naaman, he too is incomplete. In spite of all his accomplishments, in spite of the favor that is on his life, inside he is feeling unclean, dirty, scared, unaccepted, isolated, lonely, an outsider, just longing to belong. Physically, we can see that his skin is diseased. In Hebrew, the word tazarath, T-Z-A-R-A-A-T-H, or leprosy, in English, simply means a disfiguration condition of the skin, hair, the beard, or the head. It could have been a serious case of acne, eczema. It could have been rustacea, dermatitis, any kind of skin disease. Scholars don't really think it was leprosy, but leprosy is just a word that was used to encompass various types of skin diseases. With our spiritual eyes, we can see from God's perspective that tesaret, leprosy or dry skin, reveals something about the human condition of the person. Ancient rabbis argued that the inward cause of tesaret was sin. 
particularly antisocial sin, such as lying for selfish end, sexual immorality, false oaths, pride, and especially slander. As we look at Numbers chapter 12, verse 1, 9, and 14b, we discover that Marion and Aaron begin to talk about Moses because of his Kushnite wife. The anger of the Lord burned against them, and he left them. When the cloud lifted from above the tent, there stood Marion, leprous, like snow. Confine her outside the camp for seven days. After that, she can be brought back. As you can see from scripture, God revealed to us that Marion was spiritually unclean by affecting her with a skin disease. Matthew chapter 15 verses 18 and 19 remind us the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart and those make a person unclean. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. In Leviticus chapter 19 verse 16 we are reminded do not go about as a tattletaler among your people. James chapter 4, verse 11, speak not evil one of another. And in Matthew chapter 12, verses 35 and 36, I say unto you, for every idle word that a person shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Beloved, on this communion Sunday, each of us, you and I, all of us, are just like Naaman. We find ourselves unclean. We have worked extremely hard over the course of these past four weeks, you know, that since we last received communion, to do what is right in the eyes of men and women. But what about doing what is right in the eyes of God? How have there been, have there been, have there been occasions when God has witnessed our sin nature rise up inside of us, when we have failed to follow the second greatest command to love thy neighbor as thyself, Matthew 22, verse 37 through 39, have we been like Naaman walking these past few weeks in pride? Or could we be like Marion speaking from a selfish, unkind, cruel, judgmental spirit? Have we, have you and I, been engaging in gossiping, backbiting, tattletaling, as children would say, within our friend groups? Have we, have you and I, been whispering, whispering, whispering to one another and to others, to anyone who will listen to our whispers? Have you, have I, have we been stirring up strife in our families, in our places of employment, in our neighborhood, in our community, in our church? If we answer yes, if I've answered yes, if you answer yes, beloved, we have been inflicting pain and creating brokenness for ourselves, but more importantly, for those we are called and commanded to love. As we pause this moment, in this very moment, as we pause for Love Feast, let us confess our sins before God. Let us repent. Let us turn away from them. and ask the Lord to make us clean. In order to be made clean spiritually, in order to receive spiritual healing and to be made whole, we must listen to God. Listening means that we are actively making our quiet time with him a dialogue instead of a monologue. In other words, we're talking to God and God is talking to us 
instead of us just talking to God. Jeremiah says to us in Jeremiah 33 and 3, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. In order to be made whole, to be healed physically, spiritually, and emotionally, we must be willing to do what God asks us to do, and we must believe that God has the power to heal us. No matter how simplistic God's instructions are for our healing, no matter how complex the instructions may be that we must follow to complete the task, we must be obedient and just do what God instructs us to do. Go, wash yourselves seven times in the Jordan, 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 10. Camp outside your home seven days, Numbers 12, 14. Hebrews 10 and 22. Let us draw nearer to God in a sincere heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with the cleansing, with cleansliness, with the purity of the Holy Spirit, that our conscience might be clean and our bodies might be washed with pure water. Wash and be clean. This day, God is inviting each of us you and I, to wash, to wash ourselves in this moment, in this love feast moment, and be clean. Be clean of our sins so that we might come together as families, to be clean of our sins that we might come together as a community, to be clean of our sins that we might come together as a nation and a world, that together the body of Christ will usher in the kingdom of God, that all might be saved and receive eternal life. Wash and be clean. Amen. <clears throat>